Hey, what is uh, going on, everybody? I hope everybody is having an amazing day. Today, I'm going to be doing a install video on my PRL Cobra intake, the uh, code iron intake. It's the full one. I have the race maps option for it because I already have a K tuner. You might as well get it. It's an S35 horsepower. I'll be showing you guys how to install the intake, showing you what I'm doing in my own backyard so you guys don't pay somebody to do it. And the tools you'll be needing and i'll be doing a drive after i get the intake on to use show you guys what it sounds like it's definitely going to be worth it from the videos i've seen and some of the tools you'll need for this here is you're going to need a 10 millimeter you're going to need a flathead screwdriver and you're going to need a four-way phillips screwdriver a couple of extensions and a drill is a pitch tool. You're just gonna need a four-way to take off the math sensor right here and these screws right here. You're only gonna need to take off this one here. And I might end up having to grab a six millimeter. That might be a 5.5 millimeter to get that off because it is stripped. And you'll have these two 10 millimeters down here you need to take off. There's one here and you got one back here. And you got your connector right here. You just push in and it unplugs. Be careful, do not break these math sensors because these are really expensive. But simply pull your connector off here and it should clip in right here, but mine's broke. And you're gonna want to go ahead and get the car up on jack stands, jack it up, pull it up on blocks like I showed you here where ramps maybe this here is perfectly safe just if you're going to use concrete blocks remember to use a wood block on top of them and slip a jack stand up under just in case it does decide to try to fall but uh after you get the top parts taken off here some of the other things you'll need to take off is you have two boats down here you're going to want to take these boats off down here i'll be showing you more in a minute and you pull off the inner fender so you can get in there and there's also two boats on the bottom down here that hold the lower air bounce on. You got to take out to get to those. You can get to them from the top when this is off. But this whole top piece does come off. However, taking them off from the bottom is way easier to just taking a skid plate off. As I'm like, six screws have a skid plate on. This 10 millimeter, and I believe this 10 millimeter. And your skid and the uh, inner fender should pull back on this. And your skid plate, normally you'd have fasteners all up under here. It's just like a screwdriver to take them off, no big deal. Your car's probably missing your skid plate like mine. I had a branch on the road and it disappeared. And the other boats you need to take off is this boat right here, which holds the uh, lower air bots on, I believe. It mounts it to the subframes, so uh, you will need to take that off. And right here, I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to get my phone here. And this boat right here will come out. And the hoe up where the air box will come off. Again, you can get to that from the top of the ratchet wrench. But it's easier on the bottom. And I would recommend getting the car off the ground just for the simple fact. You'll have a little bit more rotation room because these cars are pretty low on the ground. But I'm going to start taking the stuff off here. And so you got some of the other stuff you'll need to look out for when you purchase these intakes you have a street math and you have a race math basically all it is is the street math you can use with the stock tune i think you get a 15 horsepower gain off of it so you can just boat it up you're good to go the reason it is is the housing that the math goes through it's the same size as stock so the field trims stay within two to three percent of each other and you will not have a tuning issue however if you already have a k tuner or you plan on getting one with the intake, just go ahead and get the race mouth. It's good for 20 horsepower, which is an extra five horsepower over the street mouth. And it's definitely going to be wilder than the street mouth because there's going to be more of the air that travels through here. So, but you will, with the race mouth, you'll have to get in your K-tuner. We're Honda out of tuner, whichever one you're using. And you need to get in there and be positive if you turn on the race mouth option so the field trims are correct. If not, I'm pretty sure your car is just going to you get too much air and i'm pretty sure it would just make it actually end up running rich cut it'll be out of calibration your car just run like crap and you'd want to be sure to be sure that you have the tune on for the race map getting a race map okay i'm gonna start taking off the top here it's a boat here 
and that one down there is missing. I took it out for aerodynamic purposes. You don't need it. You get rid of a rate reduction in aerodynamic, and I'm gonna take off this tube right here directly from the intake. All right, pulling the top wood off here. I got both boats out. This clamp here, please make sure to be careful. Loosen the clamp up really good and try not to put too much pressure because this is composite plastic. If it does get really hot, it's sitting right above the turbocharger. If you was to crack this here and not notice it, your car's gonna run like crap because it's getting air after the mass airflow sensor and you do not want that, guys. So the air box pretty much just comes right out. Make sure you have that connector on hooks and you're gonna wanna just go ahead and set this air box over to the side right here. And I would only take the mass airflow sensor out when you get the other intake on, avoid it getting contaminated or anything because if something gets in there and messes that up, it's gonna throw a reading off, you're off to clean it. But right here, you'll end up looking like this right here. And when my intake gets here in a couple hours, I do believe you have to take off this bracket right here. This goes away. And you need to relocate the clutch swan over here. It moves over. There's a relocation kit for that. So I'll be showing you what I'm talking about when the intake gets here. But I'm just getting a head start because it should be here in about one to two hours. So I'm going to crawl up under here and get these two nuts off real quick. Well, two boats off down here real quick. And if you'd look at that, guys, I got these two boats out. And if you see right here, this is a screw that I was missing a while back through these stock air belts. I never could find it. Maybe I could find my every 10 millimeter socket that fell down in there if I'm lucky. Those little suckers like to hide. And I'll be leaving a link to the tools that I'm using, such as the screwdrivers and uh, the wrench and sockets and stuff like that. And the intake down in the description. The intake's for sale on Amazon Ashwin. It's like. 387 bucks and you have the race map and the uh street option on that as well so you can check out amazon and get that but once you unboat that bottom part here it should just pull out of here you'll have to work it around in here a little bit because it is because it is hung up on a couple of things Slowly but surely, I got her out of here. She was uh, pretty tight, tightest one I've had in a while, but go ahead and set this aside. You might be able to sell these stock pieces on eBay. You never know. Somebody might have had like a front end collision and a shop could be looking for these pieces for broke theirs. Could you never know? You could be able to sell some of this stuff. So it's worth just wrestling on eBay, see if somebody buys it, try to make a little bit of your money back. But okay, next thing will be to. Go ahead and you want to get your inner fender loose in here. Just take your uh, 10 millimeter and start taking out the boats here. First one's going to be this outside one. And once that comes out, just play around here and you'll see if more. I believe this one here has to come out. Okay, that's out. And you'll tell if you have all the boats out you need because the inner fender will move around like you need. Now all you gotta do is just pull it out and uh, fold it under the bumper. All right, just so I got, we're good to go here. It's good for your nice ass that's in here because the air filter does sit in here. And what I may end up doing is trying to knock out these fins right here knock a hole into them or something just to try to get some more air flow in here because this ain't opened right now since uh, it looks like that intake filter is going to sit right in this area so i might go ahead and do that but after you get that out you might want to come over here and pull it out over here too it just depends you can just cut your well to get more room here that's finally gone here we got my uh, PRL Cobra intake here. Go ahead and do a little unboxing there. It's like you get a front a tag plate for that. I'm not really into that stuff, but it's pretty cool there's something. Like this is the lower intake tube in here. This here pretty much with this boat up to the bottom there. Cone filter goes on here. And we got some connections there. Already looking at this here, I could sell some really good detailed product. They put a lot of work 
commitment to this intake design and just to really like get the quality high quality stuff the first impression to really get on there you got your rubber tubing around here the flow through this here looks crazy it's like a really good design intake i'm very glad i ended up dealing with this we got some race stickers here for the aerodynamic purposes not a lot of horsepower if they help the aerodynamics and we got this right here that's pretty cool definitely be using them again if i ever got a big turbo and we got some miscellaneous hardware here some boats and stuff that you're going to use to mount it up to the bracket relocations and you got a little bracket right here and you got these two brackets right here these are the brackets that require you to relocate the clutch line and you got your two clamps and uh, i'm not for sure what's in here i guess this is the race math housing yep race math housing but all right i'm gonna start getting these brackets on here and show you guys just want to do a little unboxing there pretty cold out here it feels like i'm on mars right now if i had a space to it so you just need to take off this boat right here and you don't have another boat right here and there's a bracket here save these boats i'm not sure if you need to reuse them and if you sneak in behind here and clutch line you need to take that 10 millimeter off to mention you guys are just going to need an allen wrench i'm not for sure on the sides run right here but you just need it for this little screw up might be a six millimeter allen wrench so basically what you want to do when you get the uh brackets off of here you'll be removing this bracket right here and then after that do you want to go ahead and unboat your clutch line here's your clutch line the original mount was here so what you do now is you want to put this piece right here in the original location where your clutch line was at on that boat hoe and then you're going to boat your clutch line back up on here using one of these supplied boats or the factory boats and the way you tell if this is on right is you'll have a little nub right here and that's going to line up with this hoe in the frame right here once that's in there you have it positioned right and go ahead and tighten this down and if you don't have an iron wrench a flat blade screwdriver will get you by just make sure to crank down on it because you don't want any of this stuff coming loose on you and rattling or anything like that okay just, i got this up here boated in here guys the Allen screw set in the top boat. You just want to make sure that your clutch line isn't coming in contact or anything like that. They can rub on here. I may come back in here and zip tie this clutch line back. Got a sort of question of transmission. I think some of it's just to do where I had somewhere installed a clutch in my car a couple of years ago when the factory ones went out and I believe the line, they just didn't put it back on there right. But it's not really rubbing. And you want to make sure you're still on to get to. But the way you tell which brackets you're going to need for the top is you want to just take your stock one here. And it's going to look pretty close to this as far as a mounting hose. So that's good here. This one here is the bottom. Just the reason you can tell is it has these two hose right here on the bottom. That's your bottom bracket. But you just come in here for your top bracket. And I believe I try to find out which way it goes here. I believe it goes like this, guys. It's gonna sit. It's gonna sit over here close to the. I got this here in silent. I got the block boated in, island boat. The clutch lines pushed up where it needs to be. It's tightened in. I may have to come in here and zip tie back its clutch line. Some reason this kinked up on me. I think that's where I had the car worked on a couple of years ago, some warranty work, and they done that. That doesn't seem right. But the way you tell which brackets you're going to want for the top is you'll have two brackets. The one with two hoes real close together is the bottom bracket. Here's the top bracket. The way you tell is basically these boat hoes are going to line up pretty close here. And the way this goes on, from my understanding, I may have to flip it back around if it's ain't right. I'm just gonna leave it loose for now. But it comes in here like this here. Top boat goes in right there. Again, I'm gonna have to push back my clutch line so it doesn't rub around here. That ain't PRL's fault. That's just somebody else's fault, I'm pretty sure. No big deal, zip tie will fix that right up. 
But I would go ahead and boat this up. Leave the boat loose because this bottom squat is a little bit adjustable. So if you might need to add, turn it on a different angle, you'll be able to do that. I'm gonna get this in here real quick and start on getting the intake tubing in. Okay, uh, okay, moving on to the bottom here. You wanna go ahead and grab two 10 millimeter boats. The ones in the bag, you'll be needing those. And you wanna grab this bracket right here. And once you have your fender pulled back, like I showed you here, you're gonna wanna come up in here and somewhere in here, this bracket's supposed to boat up here. I believe the uh, way this boats up is about like I'm showing you right here. You know, it seems right. And the boat hose on the top, the intake's gonna boat against those, I believe. So one of these hose is threaded from the factory, but the other hose, the square hose, will require you having a nut, so I have a 10 millimeter range on standby. And I'm gonna start going ahead and putting this in here for you. Okay, I uh, managed to manhandle this in here. It actually wasn't bad. You just gotta push against the back and piece here. And the reason I said to leave this stuff loose is so you have your adjustment here, cause it'll be hard to start the boats in if this here was tight and it won't have any adjustment. And like I just mentioned, you want to kind of get this set up to where it's get all of your boats in there loose. You could go ahead and mount these boats tied here because you throw them. You go ahead and mount the boats into the intake tube and tied here. Don't go too crazy, just get them a little bit past hand tight and you'll be good. And then you can go up top and mount it there and you can just adjust around. And when you're comfortable with nothing's going to rub, you can walk all these boats down. Now it would be the good time to put on the air filter. And this air filter is probably gonna be a little bit hard to get on. It has this whip right here. So you will have to fight with it. And what I was talking about earlier, I was thinking about opening up the fog light vents right here. Cause this intake does sit in the wheel well. It's definitely gonna get some air, but it'd get way more air. If I had these uh, fog light hose opened up here, I might try to come in here and cut them out with a knife or something. Cause they're open on the other side over here. They're just ain't open on this side. I don't know why that is. So we'll see what we can do with that there. But either way, it's just been dyno proven without modification of bumper and stuff, but it's 20 horsepower boat on with the uh, race math and the race math tune, which comes with a K tuner and Honda as soon as you get it. But I'm gonna come up here and start getting these boats on right here. And once I get everything comfortable and locked down, I'll show you my end result. There's one more bracket down here that needs to come off. That's that the, um, it's what the resonator boated up to. It's just right there. There's only one 10 millimeter boat holding it on. I'm gonna sneak in there and get that out. Cause if you don't get that out, it hits the breather tube for the new intake. I just now noticed that. Okay, um, sorry about the wind, but the brackets on here, guys. This is a self walking nut, so it will be pretty hard to uh, get started on there. But you want to go ahead and leave this bracket a little bit loose. Reason being, you can get the intake set in here and get it adjusted away from everything you want. So it ain't rubbing, you can walk it down. But uh, that's pretty much it down here. I'm going to start grabbing some of the parts here and start working them in there. This here is probably going to be the most difficult part. But uh, let me see how this here works. And go ahead and check down in here and their tube and just make sure there's no dust or dirt or anything in there. It could get sucked up in your engine later on. But from what I can see here, these two hoes right here, they're gonna go to the bottom and the top hoe, I believe you should end up simple like this. As you go into, uh, I gotta do this on camera, I might not be able to. But pretty much this stub right here is going to face towards the bracket that you put beside the clutch line and these bottom hose are gonna go about the same way. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap so it's in here and uh, show you guys in a second. Okay, um, I went ahead and tighten up these boats here, these here ones up top. I was pretty comfortable with the fitment. It ain't really touching anywhere. 
I don't think it's going to touch right here either. It's close, but it's, I don't think it's going to touch. Some barely got. And I managed to get the filter on here. You may end up twisting the cone a little bit, but don't worry about it. The filter is still intact. It's going to flow. The filter is going to be a little bit hard to get on, guys, because of the fog lock connector back there. Be mindful of it. Try not to break it. Pull out the wires. And what I've done with the clamp is I just went ahead and unscrewed it like this. It's way easier without the clamp. And you just keep going and twist the motion. It'll eventually get it. Go ahead and pull it back as far as you can. Make sure it, let it seat it all the way around. And then you can just go slide your clamp back on. And you can go ahead and loosen the, tighten the clamp up. Okay, um, my clamp is on here. Try to get the clamp in a good spot. But if you're working on it again, service the filter. You can get it off here. I'd clean these filters every uh, 10,000 miles. I make K&N filter cleaning kits to clean it and all it. Or you can buy replacement filters. But pretty much, they're pretty much done down here. So you can just go ahead and just slide your inner fenders back in here. And work it around in here. And you can just go ahead and put your boats in back here. And it's good plate and all that if you took it off. And you can go up top and finish putting the tubing on or in the math house and more of that in a second but on i got the under tray and all that boated up you're gonna want to take out your math sensor here just two phillips head screws and you can reuse these screws we can use these islands that they provide right here the iron screws will look a lot cleaner i guess i'm just gonna reuse the stock one so i won't have to go find an allen key it should be no big deal on the boats up. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and let my cat in here so she'll stop rubbing around on me here. But okay, and this math sensor, remember, you put this on here, you're gonna wanna make sure you get it on the right way because this only goes one direction. But you'll see when I'm, you'll know which direction it goes because this connector here that you plug in should face towards your car. So just remember that. If you put it in there backwards, it's not gonna read right. Okay, moving on up here, you just wanna just go ahead and slide your intake tubing on. And you wanna put your clamp on before you slide this on here. And I would just, I would put the clamps like this maybe. That way they don't rub on anything. And I like when I put my clamps on, I try to keep them all facing on the same direction, like clock, like the same direction on the clock, so it just looks neater and doesn't look swappy. But I'm going to go ahead and get this on. I'm going to get this tubing. I'm going to go ahead and get this tubing on here. The tubing on on the bottom and work the race map in here. This kit has every last single thing you'll need in it. So just remember that. And like I said earlier, I'd highly recommend TRL because this here is just a really good intake. Lots of good reviews. People love it. And there's a lot of detail went in here. I mean, this thing's been in here pretty flawlessly. It ain't rubbing anymore. Fitment's good and everything. I'm a, I still got a zip tie back to this brake line here, but like I said, I believe that's where I had the warranty work and they have it in a bond. Pulling are a little bit hard to mess with. Maybe a little bit of like silicon paste would help, but uh, we're heating them up inside the house before you bring them in there. But other than that, it's pretty much ready to go here. I'm going to go ahead and get the mouth boated in there and wires hooked up. Clamps button down, make sure nothing rubs, and we'll be good to go. Put the race mouth tune on it and drive it. This piece here to get away from radiator hose, with just heat. And you want to try to get your math sensor if you can, kind of like at a straight position, 12, uh, 12 or 1 o'clock, close to where it was factory. You don't want to reel sideways or upside down. Went ahead and got in there, turned my uh, race math scaling on here. If you guys don't know how to do that, you just go up and up your K-tuner and just come over here under way out and go to main parameters and you'll have deal to scroll down or eventually see something that says math scaling and you can turn it on here and your car is good to go for math scaling. I would recommend that you go and drive the car and recheck it to make sure everything's on after you put this tuner on here. Just so, uh, because I've put these on here before and I tune ash, we didn't upload on here. So I just want to be able to check so you don't mess up your car or anything like that. Okay, so I um, finally got the tune on here. I had a lot of trouble with my ACU, went in recovery mode and stuff. I've been driving the car a little bit. 
it's definitely faster than it was and this intake man sounds crazy trying to give you a little sound here i mean that is pretty damn wild you cannot deny like just, and i'm like camera doesn't do it justice but it's pretty wild i'm trying to give you some more pulls there i mean you can hear i don't think it's pretty wild definitely it sounds pretty aggressive people's gonna notice you now you get out of here and you're trying to show off real the turbo that's for sure i mean listen to that guys it's pretty damn good you can't complain for that man this car is way faster too let me get a little pull in right here i think that's a cop coming I don't know. we'll get a 30 to 56 pull that's pretty way better than uh what my car was uh before i put this out it's pretty good definitely uh i don't know i'd say it woke my car up i would have to say i would really say woke it up because the mods i already had on this car was a white weight flywheel i had the k tuner on there and now I'll put the intake on it. And it's really cold outside right now, which helps too. Definitely a huge difference from what it just was. I'll tell you that for some facts. The car feels a lot smoother too. I'm going to go out here and look at my tune, make sure everything's good, everything's out there like it should be. But it's definitely worth getting this intake, guys. I'll tell you that. I'll try to get one more pull in over here. I'm going to try to do a mild one. It's hard to drive a stick with uh, one hand. I can't really hear it right with the windows up. Let's get them down here. Do one more pull in here. People's already looking at me like I'm crazy up here. I uh, mean, you can really hear out the... That looks pretty good. Uh, that is going to be it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed if you did hit that like button consider subscribing comment down below but check the description for the link to the intake and all the stuff you'll need to install it and if you have any suggestions just go ahead and comment that down below don't forget to go check out the grill install video i done it's pretty informative and i'll see everybody in the next video peace out